What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Power Stroke Tech Talk podcast. This is number 17. Uh, we have DS reeling with Ryan and myself. We did have uh, Mr. Kegman, Nate. He had to back out real quick to uh, take a phone call. Uh, he might be joining us again uh, tonight. We got some things we're going to talk about. Um, I actually brought some pamphlet homes from some pamphlets home from work. We're going to talk about uh, extended service plans for our Ford vehicles. Um, check out uh, my email, I guess, or my social media. Uh, if you guys want to get some merch, I got some shirts uh, coming in from the t-shirt maker. Um, and we're just recently uh, got all of our podcasts on the uh, global podcast platforms we've got spotify apple google podcast soon to be amazon and Podbean currently right now so uh something to be looking forward to um i know everybody doesn't have uh youtube red and you know doesn't have the ability to uh, let stuff play in the background so we're trying to accommodate everybody and um uh, just trying to get out there and uh, get people to hear us, see what we're talking about, talking about good stuff, talking about important stuff, talking about how to take care of your trucks. Um, and like I said today, uh, we're going to be talking about the Ford Protection Plan, the ESP Extended Service Plan from Ford by Ford. It's not third party. Um, it's something I deal with on a daily basis with trucks and vehicles coming in. Um, I would highly recommend it uh, myself. I have to uh, check on the prices. Um, preferably when you are in um, 1212 versus 336, there's still a, like a, a price break between those time frames. So we're going to go over that. Um, and anybody who's listening, um, you know, maybe tell us, you know, if you guys uh, have the extended service plan, um, if you guys have used it, if you haven't used it, um, if you sold your vehicle and sold it with it, as a selling feature. Um, yeah. I don't know. What about you guys? DS, Ryan, are you guys going to be getting any ESPs? Um, I probably should on my uh, 19 250 because uh, the bumper to bumper is going to be coming up soon. Uh, but I still have, I will, I will still have powertrain on it. Um, yeah, for 560. Five years, sixty thousand. Yeah, definitely so. gonna get it for mine for sure. I mean, I know I got diesel warranty. We got diesel warranty too. Um, you know, a hundred thousand. But you know, looking at this pamphlet, you guys can go. I'm sure online. Um, but if you stop in your local Ford store, which I would recommend just going to your Ford store, you can check out, I mean, I know this COVID stuff's got everything on lock, but, uh, you know, they got a lot of good information. Maybe check out a new super duty just to see, you know, what, what we're talking about, uh, here on the show. Um, but there are different types and different levels of ESP contracts. And you guys can see here, I don't know, this has got to be at least a meter, meter long, about three feet long. Uh, there is, I'll just briefly name them really quick. We have the premium maintenance plan. Uh, we have the essential maintenance plans. We have diesel engine care, diesel engine care plus powertrain care, base care, extra care, and then premium care premium care i don't know if you guys can see this or not but you can at least tell by the difference in the colors premium care over here is a thousand what's it say a thousand plus parts and uh covered components and i don't know the list actually goes on the back too and on the back uh there's a lot of 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 great stuff on here but the the I, I would think the best bang for your buck, in my opinion, um, when getting stuff covered is getting the premium care. And when you go to talk to uh, the I believe the finance guy at your Ford store, um, or I think you can even buy these online. You can like do like a virtual plug your car and it'll spit you out. You know like a, a 
a generic uh, price. Um, but when you look at how everything is, how many things are covered between premium care to extra care to base care, premium care is definitely the way to go. Um, it is really entailed into the mechanical components. Um, like, let's see here, let's start in the M's. What do we got? Master cylinder, master cylinder springs, uh, mobile phone control assembly, module anti-lock, module engine control, module fuel pump driver, a lot of electronics. Um, here we go, LEDs right here, LED factory installed. Um, but it does have an asterisk by it. And that is something else that would be good to talk about. It says the interior exterior lighting coverage included only if the lighting option is purchased. And so there is an additional uh, coverage you can get. Where was it on the back of here? I had another pamphlet. Um, I'll have to find it, but it, it as actual uh, additional coverage for your LEDs. Um, if you guys didn't know about that, because I mean, you all know that the headlight assemblies for these trucks are uh, pretty, pretty expensive. Um, I think I have done or I have serviced a lot of trucks that the customers have purchased the extended service plans. Uh, I mean, sorry, the maintenance plan. So they don't have to pay for any of their oil changes or um, uh, tire rotations, fuel filters, all that stuff is included. Um, Ryan has indicated to me um, the correct website for you guys um, to check this all out. This big pamphlet that I have, you guys can check out Ford Protect dot four dot com extended service plan uh and you guys can literally see exactly what i'm looking at um i've been all too familiar with the scenario where the customer let's just say i, I remember back when back in the day um it hasn't happened in, in quite some time but in the 60 days the 64 days i can remember these customers coming in getting their truck diagnosed and, you know, uh, I have warranty and they're not lying. They have warranty, but they're not understanding that their base care warranty, uh, extended service plan that they bought doesn't cover a turbocharger or doesn't cover any modules or electronics. I'm looking at the base care. It covers 84 major components. 84 compared to the premium care that's over a thousand so a customer could kind of get misled to where you know you see all these different service plans you got a b c d e f g and you got you know one's 100 200 500 600 thousand you know and so on and so forth it's like oh well let me get the middle one well taking the middle one may not always be the correct uh, avenue to, to go because here it is, you're at 60,000 miles or whatever, you're outside a powertrain um, and you have, let's say, a turbocharger for whatever reason, take a crap. Well, unfortunately, that turbo is not covered. Had you not spent the $500 just to get this base care and anted up and got the $1,800 and got the premium care and just rolled it into the finance of the truck, it would have already paid for itself because that turbocharger is $2,500. So you're like, oh, and it's like, oh, well, I have warranty. I have warranty with the salesman. They said I had warranty. Da, da. It, you didn't pick the right one. And I, I hate for customers to get into those sort of situations because now they're one, they're upset because they have to pay for a repair. They're upset because their truck that's five years old and it's got over 60,000 miles, they got to put three grand into it. They feel like they got ripped off. They're pissed at their custom, their, their salesman now. And I can't say that it's, it's their own fault. I mean, did, did their expectations of getting explained this 
correctly during the point of sale? Did they not understand? Was it rushed? This is something that's really important. And I didn't buy mine right off the rip because I knew that if I did it right off the rip or I bought it within 12-12, it's either I'm going to finance that within the whole term of the truck or I'm just going to cough up two grand and just pay for my ESP, you know, whatever my criteria is going to be that I'm going to pick. Um, so it's, it's whatever you want to do, but I would highly, highly, highly advise you to get the premium care because not only is it going to cover interior stuff, it's going to cover exterior stuff. It's going to cover uh, mechanisms in the door, or it's going to cover, um, I'm not going to say like stitching or wear items. I mean, a lot of all, I'm not going to uh, uh, sugarcoat anything. Mostly everything that we have to replace now, a lot of exterior, but a lot of interior, everything has to be digital imaged. So you have to take a picture. You have to take a three quarter shot of the car. You have to take a picture of the odometer. You have to take a picture of the back. You have to take a picture of the Vintag. Then you have to take a picture of the problem area. And it's understanding what they're doing. I get it. Um, but these hoops you have to jump through to, to get some of this stuff covered is kind of you mean you mean like there's a big guy who drags in and out maybe a little bit and kind of messes up maybe the driver's seat or something like that yeah yeah i mean it's been i've there. heard of that i've heard yeah. of that i've i've been that guy it uh, yeah i mean <laughs> it is what it is i mean it uh it's something that i i literally have to deal with all the time um and Ooh. you do have to uh you have the choice of picking um what monetary value uh, deductible you have. So you can have, you know, 50, 100. Um, I think the usual one that I typically see is people having 100. Um, um, I, don't, I don't remember picking a deductible. I did not get wheel and tire care and I really am bummed out about that. So wheel and tire care, I didn't find this out until after the fact. I did not know you couldn't get wheel and tire care after the fact. It has to be done at point of sale. Well, I did not know that. I could see that, why though. That, that assumes that you're not going to change the wheels or tires. So yeah. it's like, if you change the tires, then you're kind of limiting yourself. I feel like just over the fact that you might have to pay for a tire, maybe, maybe. But. Then also too, I think with the wheel and tire, a lot of times with a tire, you might just want to go to the nearest place. Now, how good there are they, you know, do you call like the roadside number or something and they come right to you? Or do you have like triple A? No, I call the tow truck and have it get towed to work because I'm fixing my own shit. Right. So but I think like with the if you do get the wheel and tire from Ford, how do you go about that when you do have an issue? Right. I don't know. If I, I, I were to buy new if I were to buy new tires, then I could purchase I don't know if I could purchase wheel and tire care or yeah. if I could just purchase tire care. So do they have like a roadside assistance that comes with that though when you do get that? Um I think you know, wait, I think I got it in here. Yeah, I think it does. Sorry. Didn't mean to ask you a uh a Well no, I, I bought I brought home all these uh little pamphlets here because I I hadn't actually looked at them myself. So we got rental care. What do we got? Rental care. Right, rental care. That's a big one. Big yeah, rental. Lease yeah. care. What is lease care? Lease care is going to come with some 24-hour roadside. Okay, what's this one here? Plan options. What's this one? Ford credit. You know what I really would like to know? Wear care. I really would like to know the incentives for the finance guy to get you to sign up for and what level like when you sign up for the top dog one, you say, give me everything. Give mm -hmm. me the maintenance. Give me the tire Oh, if he care. gets like a, a kickback for it or something? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I did find what the uh, Ford Protect Tire Care covers. 
Oh, did you click on that website? Yes, I do have the uh, the link. Because the website's up. probably better than this pamphlet, to be okay. honest with you. Okay, oh, wow. so it, it, it does cool. provide towing to the nearest Ford or Lincoln dealer. Really? Okay. Up to a okay. hundred dollar reimbursement. Additional plan that. tire care. Oh. It's good for the guy who doesn't Windshield modify. care? Get the hell out of here. Triple yeah, care? Exactly. Who doesn't modify? No deductible. Maybe like maybe maybe like a business guy who yeah, just like runs like straight. You're running the trucks as they come, not yep. messing with them. And you need that when premium you know, maintenance. You have a worker out, man. something happens. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder what that kickback is because that feeling when you're sitting in that chair and that finance guy goes through it and he doesn't <laughs> like take any shortcuts. He says, he gets serious. He says, let's go through this list. He turns it around. He draws all over it. And you're going to be there for about 30 minutes while he describes every single level. He's like, Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. It's so weird. It's like a weird pressure. It is. And then that's, I think that's where a lot of people get hung up. And yeah, then they, they end up buying something that they really, they don't remember what they ended up buying. That, you know, I wish I would have got that. That or like two, one or two things, like either they buy something they don't know. And that's a big factor. Like you don't know. Or you're just like, don't give me none of that, man. Don't yeah. give me any because you're selling it. Or, or, like, or the other part, too, is like when you're purchasing a car, you just went and spent, you know, I don't know, forty to $80,000 on something. And you're looking to add in a couple more grand to it. And some people start getting kind of skittish yeah. on, uh, you know, just because of the extra yeah. cost. You guys can uh, check them out at one eight seven 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 nine four sixty four thirty four, um, and you can actually plug your stuff in, and it'll actually give you a quote. Um, and check that out. I don't, I think that's important. I'm definitely going to do that, and I kind of kick myself in the ass for not uh, for not getting tire care. I mean, I want to get different. <laughs> I want to get you different don't, tires. You don't need tire care. You don't I know. Need tire well, care. I mean, tire and wheel care just to have. Well, it's good. It's good to, if you really mess up the rims. I that's guess that's what I'm but, talking about. Yeah. Um, um, now for mine, 450, I did get something, but on my 250, I remember saying, "Don't give me none of that. I got three years mm -hmm. and 36,000 miles. I ain't seen. I, mm -hmm. I don't even because I felt that pressure." And he's like, "Are you sure?" And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't need it, man. I don't need it, man. But with the 450, I did do, and you could, I don't know exactly what I did, so you might be able to elaborate a little bit, but I, the way it was explained is it's, ex, it's, it's essentially extending what the bumper to bumper would be for the term of the financing, which is uh, 72 months. So once my bumper to bumper ends, this will pick up and make it like I have bumper to bumper for the term of the financing, which is 72 months. So I don't know what level that is. It's not tire care. I didn't get that. I didn't get uh, maintenance because I like to deviate from the regular maintenance a little bit, a little bit. And they want you to use like blend and they want you to use very basic. I wouldn't even like what happens when I'm at 200 hours and 3000 miles and they're like, you, you can't get your maintenance yet. You need 5,000 miles. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know you need it. Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's why I was like, no for the maintenance. And yeah, I could, I could see where you'd have to, because if you were to come in at 5,000 miles, well, even though it's at 5,000 miles, the maintenance plan that you purchase is 75,000 mile interval. So exactly, yeah. Right, because I don't even know what the intervals would be on the maintenance plan, but 5,000 miles for me would be like really kind of starting to push it, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm going back and forth to Ford, without going back and forth to Ford, because that puts miles on a little bit, but without that, I wouldn't even, it would just be hours, not miles, straight hours. I wonder... Um... I got this. I think, I I think people, you know, speaking of engine hours, you know, when people are maintaining their trucks, and even though they're going, you know, the recommended, 
mileage. Are, are you paying attention to engine hours? You know, I don't have it pulled up right now, but Diaz has sent me a picture of his Blackstone um, fuel, uh, fuel oil analysis. And they stated right in the beginning um, that they only go by miles and that they, you know, appreciated the engine hours. The engine hours is very crucial information. And not only are we using, you know, miles to see or to, depict a point of reference of how far the mile the vehicle has traveled it's like well not only that but how long has that engine been running and coupled with those miles driven that truck has been sitting and it doesn't necessarily apply to him or me but you know for those of you that have those cab chassis and the trucks that are actually working and you know out there getting it it's something that's very important. You know, I think, you know, Matt's not here. I think um, I am going to start running full synthetic 5W40. I don't know yet what brand I want to run. I think if everybody's going to be maintaining their truck, whether it's hours or uh, miles, Regardless of that, I think it's very important to at least pick a good oil because that is going to trickle down to how it's going to start regening. That's going to affect the durability of how the vehicle is going to last because whether or not it's synthetic or not, come on. You got oil going up to your turbo. You got oil going up in here. You got oil going up in here. And the farther it gets away from the heart of the engine, I mean, you could start getting sludge buildup, you know, just... A lot of, ex lot of expensive components. Yeah. And what like, happens when you pay off your truck, you decide you want to keep it. You get, you're tired of like, okay, you get a new truck, you're always getting something new. You're always getting something new. There's going to come a day where you're like, let me ride this thing out. And the one you ride out, you know, you put, cause that, cause let's be honest at 30,000 miles, it's not going to, it's not going to be an issue. If you end up being, if this ends up being a vehicle, you keep till 200,000 or 180 or 160. That's when that preventative, you know, full synthetic from the start is extremely beneficial mm -hmm. when you're still running the same you're out of warranty you got like the original turbo you, that's a lot of moving parts that move that spin incredibly fast at incredibly high rpms you got incredibly, what kind of incredibly expensive incredibly expensive what kind of bearing is that you know on the turbo is that like a bushing or is that a ball you know bearing? i really don't know i know in the very beginning the ones i think were like some ceramic bearings or something but i don't know what the actual, they don't, it doesn't say that in the workshop manual. It doesn't tell you in the parts catalog what these bearings are made of. It, it doesn't go that far. Um, but I'm sure if you were to look like the turbo up online or something, somebody's got it broken down to where it's going to tell you, you know, what the guts are inside. I just, you know, we don't but have any. Whatever way to, the case, whatever it, the bearings are, it's. it's I wonder how. Cheap. I wonder how 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 fast are how many RPM that thing spins at. Right, I have. I Can mean, you imagine that? Probably ten thousand RPM because it's still. No. I mean, I don't know. <sighs> Shoot. Is that I'm too much? Like, I'm thinking like a hundred thousand, bro. No. Yeah. I don't think that fast. Oh. I don't think ten thousand. No. What's, Let's look that Ryan, up. Right Ryan, now. what's your guess before we look it up? Um. Dang it. I'm I'm gonna say like thirty thousand. No. I'm gonna say ten thousand, and that. I think, I think if it's a hundred thousand, I think it would explode. No. Let's see. Ford, turbo. I'm looking to diesel. Oh, oh, you know what? I'm wrong. RPM. Yeah, uh, Arod, you are right. Yeah, bro. I was gonna say at least a hundred thousand. At least it may That's be like one fifty, bro. So yeah, just one say one. 150 to 250,000 RPM. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. So depending like, on the size of the of the rotating parts, but the power stroke the power stroke of a 67 probably runs a pretty big single bro, turbo so it's probably closer to the 150. That is so fast. 
that's that's insane. That's dude. stupid, bro. That is insane. Like I can't that's even awful. comprehend how fast that is. Like no, you see either, your, your tack and it says one thousand. Bro, a hundred and two hundred thousand? Like yeah, that's... 150 to 200 times that. Oh my god. How fast is the And you spin? want and, and you're running and stuff. you're going ten thousand miles on the oil change. These people are freaking dumb. Well, ass. and but but you, not even on. let's not even let's not even say that though, because I think you can go ten thousand on a on on a, on an oil change, but it but comes what? down to it comes down to the fact that you could get on that you could get on the highway and you could just rack up miles and you could be putting those miles on so fast that you're degrading your oil at the same rate that I am in 3000 miles because of the fact that you're putting miles on so quickly Hmm. Now, if you're doing short trips and 10,000 miles, that could be bad. But if you're doing like light tone, very light, you're not hauling anything. You're just driving cross country. You could put 10,000 miles on you know, on one oil change because you're just driving. Like you're just, I mean, you'd be changing your oil so often that it's not even being used up all the way. True. I think it depends on. I mean, because that's less that's less cycles from hot to cold. It's, you know, I, I still think you should run a full synthetic if you're doing that. But. I think I'm going to. I don't know. I don't know what I want to run. I don't know if I'm going to run motorcraft. I think you should just start with motorcraft first because you got so? time. Yeah, you start with motorcraft. You know, what, then... I'm going to look at your uh, your text that you sent me because I want to. I thought their little um, like their little explanation. Or like their little breakdown was kind of. It was cool, yeah. And it, according to to, uh, to them, I still had uh, I still had life left in oil a little bit as far as the total base number, uh, and the flash points and all that. It's not like the oil was like done, but I don't think you want the oil to be done to be burnt or all the all the parameters of the oil are like scream and change me right now. Only thing it had a lot of metal in it, different components like copper and iron and Sean, silicone. And we recorded miles since we can only use one metric, but we're always happy to note another in comments like so: 195 total hours as the time of sampling. The factory fill tends to have a lot of extra metal in it, especially copper and iron like we see here. Silver is likely soldering compound while silicon comes from sealers slash lubes. All of this should start to improve soon until the silver silicon washes out and metals resemble averages. For the 6.7 power stroke, they reflect 6,900 mile runs. The TBN shows active additive left and AMSOIL 0W40 is fine to use. Resample in 5K miles. So Now, that, that 0W40 thing is something that I've been doing a ton of research into, and it's hard to find anything or any information on that. Sean, how much, that, how much did that cost you? $40. Wow. How much did it cost to ship it? They when they when they um set up the Blackstone shipping, that's included. Oh, so basically, wow. you call them up or you go on the you go on their website. You don't call them, but you go on their website. You can call them, but you can just go on the website, and I'll show you the guys the kit that they send me, or they will send you. And I ordered like I just went on the site and was like, give me like four sets, give me four kits. They sent me four kits. They don't charge nothing. They just send them out to you. There's four kits. You don't pay nothing. You got it right Whoa, there. That's and pretty cool. You get this kit, and this is pretty much it. It's a little box or a little um, container. Call it, container. And uh, that's pretty cool. You put this on it. It's like a little science a little, experiment. You get a little card. Now the kit, the test is is the test is thirty dollars. But if you want to know the total base number, it's forty dollars. 
And uh, so you put this around it. You wrap this up around it. There's oh, another, no it's, it's some instructions with some quirky stuff written on it. And then you wrap this up and you put it all in there. It tells you how to catch the sample and all that. Really? And then from there, you like, uh, you do something online and you pay online and it tells you. So you pay the $40 if you want the total base number or $30 if you just want to do a test. And then you get this number that you write on the card from the internet, then you send it in and you just take this to the mail, to the, to the post office and they already know what it is. It's all put back inside of this and they scan it real quick. You're in and out in like point two seconds. Damn. And they throw it in a box and a couple of weeks later, it, out took, of here. it took me a couple of weeks and they, uh, maybe a week and a half and they sent the results via email and left me a little note that you were just reading. And uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's a tough one because like I said, it's $40. So you're talking about changing your oil and paying another $40 on top of that may not be necessary, but for me, it's just, I think it's kind of cool to know. Yeah. It's kind of cool to know it's content. You know, I make videos on a truck where it really comes in handy though for the guys that want to run a extended interval. If you're gonna run an extended interval, you can save a lot of money, but you need to know what's going on with your oil if you're doing that. Right. So if you skip an oil change and you take, you know, whatever, a cord out and do a filter and put a filter back on there and top it off and send a sample, that can save you money. You know, that can save you money in the long run. So, but, you know, if the sample comes back and tells you you need to change your oil, then you can save a big headache or a big yeah. Repair, yeah. repair bill. Yeah, I can see you. I can see that being, <clears throat> you know, kind of preventive. It's pretty much your eyes into your, your engine. Yeah, yeah. Um now, for me, you know, an $80,000 truck, we had some oil consumption in the start. We were wondering what was going on, and it turns out it's pretty much normal. I'm curious to see what people are going to think of that video or what they did think of that video because that video came out after they, before they saw this. Or oh, before the one, this year. They're going to love that video. That video, I've already posted it. I've already posted it, and it's got, like, all likes. Dude. It's, it's, I can't uh, wait to make my heated steering wheel video i think that's going to be a hot item because no pun intended um i think if we're being oe it's a factory steering wheel we're doing factory modifications factory wiring harness um i'm excited i think i think dudes are going to be real receptive to it um just just for the simple add-on, I think I've been. No, I think I've been selling a lot of those uh, kits uh, for the running light above the license plate, just like the dually. Uh, a lot of guys have been very receptive to it, uh, buying the light, buying the pins, getting the connector kit from their local Ford dealer, um, and it's just uh, it's been real fun. I talked to a lot of dudes, you know, send me pictures of it with with it installed uh, afterwards and just kind of, you know, giving me feedback. It's been, been kind of cool. Um, I don't know. Too bad DS don't need it. I still got to put it on Ryan's truck. I, I don't know. I already had it before. I'm not missing it. You know what I mean? His and truck came with that. His truck. No, came mine with doesn't. That. Mine, mine doesn't have a heated steering wheel right now. No, no, no. I'm talking oh. about your light. Oh, that light? Yeah, the dually light. <laughs> I already have that, but the heated steering wheel, I've had it. It was cool, but I don't really miss it. You know, it's not one of those things that I, I'm missing. I'm coming from a 98, so I think heated steering wheel would, would be most <laughs> most. It's like I cool. didn't even really, like, drive with both my hands on the steering wheel, so it's kind of like, uh. I'm excited to see how it's going to work. I do like having a heated seat. You know, when you're oh, so yeah. cold, when you're so cold, it's down to the bone and you get that. You get bum the bum. Heat, you bum bum. I wish there was a way that I could add more caster to my front suspension 
on my 450. For what? I don't know. It just seems like I'm, I don't want to say it's wandering. What it like? It, it's almost like you got to pay too much attention while you're driving. Like if with you or use, without the plow. Without the plow. Once you put the plow on it, it drives better. Once it's weighted down, even with the load of salt in the bed helps a little bit, but the plow and a little bit of load of salt, it's like perfect. It drives better. Hmm. It's good mileage and everything, but without the plow, it's like you're just, I've gotten used to the constant correcting. I've got, that doesn't bother me, but like I take my, if I go and like try to change the radio station or someone calls, I notice like, I gotta. I might start drifting in the lane a little bit just because it's so much correction. That I don't even notice it no more. But it. I don't know. It's just to me. I wish it drove a little more straight, a little more cast or whatever. But take to make it just drive a little bit straighter. I wanted to put mine on the alignment rack just to see if my toe, if, see if everything was in the green. I mean, I'm not having a pull. I know my tires are wearing like shit. I was thinking about it because I drove my 250 because my salt spreader on the 450 is broken, which sucks because it's nice having all that stuff ready to go when that, like when it comes, when the ice comes down and you're just ready to go, it's just nice. Good feeling. But, you know, the spreader had an issue, which is actually, this is what, I don't know what the problem is, but I did remove the bearing from the spreader and. Oh, snap the grease fitting broke on it, but the bearing's not shot. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm going to put a new bearing on this spreader and see what's going on. But um, I drove, I had to, anyway, I had to drive my 250 and it, the front end's better on the 250 as far as like driving in uh, a straight line. But what I noticed is the amount of effort to, to steer low speed maneuvers is higher on the 250, but it's lower on the 450. It's almost like the 450 just whips around easier, like it turns better. I wonder if the caster is the same on the 250 as it is as a 450. Because it seems like there's more caster on the 250. Well, you also don't have that wide track either, so. Right. I don't know if the wide track runs the same caster angle. It's almost like it's the, the front end on the 450, it's like more behaved with a lot of weight on it. Whereas the 250 is just kind of, it's fine either way, weight or not. I know that no thing way. looks so freaking wide. The dually? Oh, man. It looked good in that video you uh, you recorded with your phone. I know. It looked pretty pretty sweet. That's going to be the, like just montage footage for that, uh, that power steering control module talking about. Dude, you should have got, we should... Have you done that yet? Because we can get our trucks together and we can film that. Yeah, that would be a good, that would be good. Good little, uh, both the diesels and all crammed in there. Probably get a good but, gas. Hey, Ryan, let me show you this while I, while you're here. I know Power right Truck PTT has seen it. I want to show you this while I got you here. I want to see what you think. This modification that I just did to the 450. I stayed up all night, one night, wrenching. I got the truck here in the backyard. Matter of fact, shit. Oh, there we go. Get some light. Yeah. So I went into the upfitter switches and I put it here for now. I don't know if I'll switch it right there. What do you do? He's showing me oh, his, your lights. Uh, his, his mod. They looked up pretty we, sweet, man. I like the what lights. Do you think, what do you think about that? Yeah, I like that. I, I, I could work with that. Because when I'm backing up the dually at night, I can't see the wheels in the mirrors because yeah, the I, windows are tinted. Yeah, I get that because you can you can see the markers, but you can't see the wheel. And it's not exactly the same. It's not the same point of reference. So no, right. that makes sense. It's hard to, it's hard to hit that target. Yeah, so, no. So I got it on that switch. Are they the same light now? Did you switch it out yet? No, I, I got it ordered. What's cool is how it like shines the wheel. Like it looks like, it looks like the wheel has almost got a rock light. Yeah, what like kind of what lights are those? That is a um, I like the skinny grill, one. a grill light. That's just a little grill. Um, stro- it can't strobe. It's just like it a flat like LED. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 But Just like it's probably is, like a six or seven LED. Six, a six LED. Yeah. The problem is I only ordered one by mistake. So I'm running a temporary light here, which is a bigger, a bigger light. That one looks brighter. Yeah, that does look it, brighter. This one is brighter. It throws more light, bigger, wider. Yeah. Now this is a twenty dollar made in China, a Weedro light, P67 and all that, but it's just a cheap light. I really like well, how that shines on the tire. I know, but they they work. These little cheap lights work. But it don't look like the light itself doesn't look as good because it's big old clunky, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think when I finally get the other one in, I might just keep this, but I'll move it inside so you don't really see it. So you don't see it's all bulky, Uh but it can still throw all that light. But that one definitely looks brighter than just a little, just a little uh, flush mount light. But I mean, flashlight, flashlight. But <laughs> it's like I don't know. Full Do purpose. you think it's on the it's on the switch? And I feel like I'm gonna accidentally leave it on one day. It'll happen. And I'll probably kill my battery. Oh no! You, you know you'll leave it on driving down the road, and someone will get mad. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've already done that on the freeway. Yeah. It's kind of like with uh, like auxiliary uh, plow reverse lights. Oh yeah. <laughs> now. Have you seen my plow lights? My plow yeah. reverse lights? You seen them? Nope. Oh, so on mine, when I turned on the salt dog, and uh, that turns on a set of cheap Chinese lights that I oh. got like that. Yeah, I did the same and thing. I, and I was trying to think, like, all right, oh, if sure. I accidentally leave this on, I don't want it to shine right at nobody. Like, if I point it straight back and someone's behind me and it's just shining right at them. So right. I kind of pointed it away from, you know, as much as possible away from. So if I leave it on, it might not be an issue. I like that so, spread. So I did the same. I have the same spreader. Did the same thing. I got some Amazon LED lights. Put them on there and I have them facing backwards, but they're tilted down just a little bit. So yeah. they don't blind anyone. But I still get a good throw off the back of like probably, I don't know, 15 feet. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, just so, so I can this, see the salt. This don't throw. Oh. This don't throw enough. But when I put it this, when I put this in reverse, that camera picks it up real good. Like it looks like. I don't know. I guess the OEM cameras have good night vision. That's pretty much an OEM camera in a housing. It has real good ability to see the salt. So I almost saw it more in reverse, just because you can see like where it's going. Or okay, are you gonna? Are you throwing salt? Are you throwing salt in the grass? Like it lets you get right up to the lawn and not throw it you should lawn. use your upfitter switch to turn that camera on when you're not in reverse that's Can what i did do that yeah how do you do that turn the camera on so you can use <laughs> no i'm saying you can use the upfitter switch for that i didn't know that what do you so, think your reverse is doing it's turning the camera on so you'd be, you're gonna you're gonna use the upfitter to send that signal to turn the camera on then Dude, that's that's a that's next level, dude. So, do you is that is your reverse camera actually in your in dash, or do you have a separate monitor for it? I that's in, that's part of OEM Ford. Okay, okay, because I know you can get I the. I don't have a separate monitor. Okay, because like in mine, I had to, uh, you know, your your rear view mirror becomes useless anyways when you put a salter in the bed. Right. So I have my rear view camera the monitor mounted to the actual rear view, you know, mirror. It is what it is. Rear view ma- oh, so it's a aftermarket monitor and aftermarket yeah, camera. camera. So, and I have it hooked to the upfitter so I can hit the switch. I leave it on all the time, even, you know, the whole time I'm plowing. So mm. Ford, Ford has so many safety parameters in place as far as the OEM camera. And I don't know. I mean, A-Rod, do you think we could put a reverse camera have the OEM reverse camera come on automatically with an upfitter switch or just stay on with an upfitter switch? Yeah, because all it's doing is is looking for that signal when you're in reverse. So if you give it to that signal. Yeah, you're just overriding it, basically. That you would be I mean? pretty damn cool. I mean, if you could, I mean, how far into the infotainment would you have to go? Is that is that infotainment? Is that because there's so many things that it's thinking. Once you're in reverse, 
it don't care. Like, it don't care how fast you're going, none of that stuff. But in drive, it's like, how fast are you going? And at over three miles an hour, it turns off and all that crazy stuff. That would be a huge. That would be a huge thing if we could figure that out. Have you seen yeah. anybody doing that? No. Dude, if we could figure that out, because that's a I, big topic that no one's been able to do. I do wonder if you would have to override something else because of, like, you know, how when you go to type in an address on your nav, but you're moving at a certain speed, and it won't yeah. let you do it. I wonder if there's something with that camera. If you would hit a certain speed and forward, if it would. That's a good point. It would, it would try to turn the camera off. Right, but. You don't really need it to work at a high rate of speed. No, when you're doing plow- plowing, you're yeah. like, what, 10 tops, 15 maybe? Yeah. yeah. Between how crazy you're getting. But I wonder if it's like the whole Sync 3 kind of deal that needs to be told it's in reverse or no. what is reverse? Like, is that just a Reverse signal? is what I tell it. Does it is it a certain resistance or is it data is that is reverse data that's sent to the module of multiple modules yeah like the trans the trans range sensor is providing a signal manually because the shifter link is just connected to that so it's going to manually go from the shifter to the trans range sensor and the trans range sensor is going to convey that to PCM, BCM, TCM, and shit. Every module, ABS, IPC. Well, that's something we got to look into to see if we can get, I mean, what would you do? Tell the BCM that we're not in, that we're not in drive, we're in reverse, and let me, let everything else think we're in reverse. The first thing I do is hook up and see what what is giving it power, and then I would provide power to the camera or tap, you know, upfitter switch one or something to the power feed of that camera while it's off. I would give it power and see what, what the hell happened. Very, very interesting. If you could pull that off, that'd be a huge thing because a lot of guys, they'll hook up and they're like, well, why can't I look at my trailer hitch? And I actually think the new, I've heard rumor that the new 21s, 450s, 250s, Super Duties, they will allow you to uh, take a glimpse at your hitch and that the better your in the better your truck now uh, compared to the twenties and prior anything over three miles per hour everything turns off. I talked to but a Ford GM, engineer who does yeah. the six seven stuff, uh-huh. and we we're talking about the horsepower and the torque. Uh huh. You know what he told me? What? He said, wait to 2023. <sighs> well, what the, what the heck? Why didn't he just tell you what's got a little something that's coming in 2023? He didn't say anything else. He said, just wait to 2023. <sighs> well, look at how crazy this 150 is. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Like you walk up to the thing and it lights up. And it's t- letting you know. It's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a BMW almost because you walk up to it and it's greeting you. It knows you're getting closer, so the headlights. Hello, turn Sean. On. And it's doing all this stuff, but it's it's got that hybrid engine, you know, the three five EcoBoost with more horsepower. Torque I want to check that of, out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. My thing is like, that's I next really level. want one. I really want one, and it's like, I need a long bed. If it's an F-150, I need a six and a half foot bed. I, I And they don't offer that right now. I'm, Hell not, no. I'm not getting a little short bed. Like, what am I going to do with that? I can't even pretend to haul anything. So, um, But yeah, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they're, if they're talking a, a six, seven power stroke with a hybrid, you know, some kind of hybrid technology. There's a lot of potential there. Because, I uh, uh, where'd it go? They've got so much payload. 
they've got so much capacity that they could they could put a 400 pound battery in it and not you can't you can't do that with a 150 because you don't have no payload you can't you gotta watch what you're putting in there but with a with a with a heavy duty truck you could have an 11 uh, 11 5 gross vehicle weight rating package and put an extra couple hundred pounds or whatever you could just increase the gross vehicle weight rating a little bit and still have the same hauling abilities. So I wouldn't be surprised they're going to go hybrid diesel. I have a feeling that that probably is what they're going to do. The problem though, the problem is like if you got a six, seven right now in 2020, 2021, you've got 1,050 foot pounds of torque you really don't need any more power. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think. I mean, uh, my 450 just doesn't need any more power. Like, ooh, uh, maybe it's just me because I got these these commercial tires. There ain't no more power to put down with these commercial tires because there's no more grip, there's no more traction. So, and I want, with the gearing and everything. So, I want to talk about. Um... Uh, one more thing here while we have these last few minutes on the show, I want to talk about these guys, uh, hot shot secrets. Um, I just put this up on the screen. If any of you guys are watching, um, <clears throat> this is a company whom I just reached out to. Uh, I'm actually waiting for them to, uh, get back to me. I don't know if any of you guys are aware or have actually heard of these guys. Um, they are uh, out of Ohio. They are not that far away from me. Um, you guys can see uh, right here on our products, they got a whole bunch, whole bunch of stuff. Um, let's check out for hand sanitizer. Yeah, let's. Let's look at that really quick. What did it even say about that? What is it? What, did, what does it's, that say? Is that performance hand sanitizer? Oh, well, Hot because, shot of COVID, secrets. because of COVID, they yeah. got to have a hand sanitizer. Yep. Hmm. That's so fun. It looks like a, 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 a jug of oil. They have a, uh, a gel one and a non gel. Um, our mm-hmm. products, let's do engine oil. Let's see what they got. They got, why is this cut off here? Looks like they got 530, 540 gray diamond euro oil, black diamond outlaw oil, 1540. Um, so looks like our six sevens. Uh, we got a 540 blue diamond pow oil and a green diamond fleet oil. And this is our 10W30. Let's see what this 540 uh is all about looks like uh we got full synthetic uh heavy duty diesel diesel engine oil uh guaranteed to not void your manufacturer's warranty 100 percent satisfaction money back fast free shipping uh one gallon is gonna cost you 44.92 is that a lot i don't know um just really quick, some of the things, uh, was the that benefits. Four in a gallon, so that's like just over ten dollars a quart, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, improves bit, fuel economy up to three percent. Lowers oil consumption. Handles soot forty six better than CJ four, which is our current uh, uh, API rating um, on the back of the. Uh, oil container you guys will see reduces friction reduces wear 71 percent less over cj4 so two two things better than cj4 eases starting improves power preserves fuel injectors as well as turbo and engine we were just talking about the turbo stuff so the crucialness for clean oil and and top-notch oil duh widens operating temperature range improves i'm sorry provides high turbo rpm quality we were literally just talking about that extends oil change interval extends engine life um and right here i i have 
yet to believe, but that's why I want to reach out to them. I want to talk to them. I want to see what they're talking about. The oil can be run 50,000 to 100,000 miles as long as the oil is kept clean and monitored every 10,000 miles for TBN number. A true POW oil, it's P-A-O. I, I don't know if it's P-A-O or if it's POW. Uh, Maybe we should look that up and see what that even means. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm uh... Uh, stands in a category of its own above all other synthetic formulas. Hot Shot Secrets 5W40 and 15W4, sorry, 15W40 CK4 specification are 100% pure synthetic using only group 5 and group 4 base oils. The 5W40 and 15W40 POW CK4 are made of purely poly alpha olefin. Poly alpha olefin is that kind of oil. So it's actually an acronym. So uh, this poly alpha, poly alpha olefin oil that requires a very small amount of viscosity improvers to meet the weight specification. This allows the hot shot uh, poly oil. Uh, to be loaded with more longevity and performance additives, keeping the oil cleaner longer and providing better mileage and horsepower. So for them to have that back, I mean, that's pretty uh, bold. That's some pretty, pretty steep stuff. Well, one thing we know for sure is they do have some of the best power stroke or diesel um additives on the market and you know we run the ford stuff and no knock at ford i'm sure the stuff's great and it does everything it's supposed to do but seated pants i don't notice a difference it's not worse it's not better you know you put the anti-gel in i've put them together i've put the cetane boost with the anti-gel a dose for 48 gallons so i just i'll just i'll dose 50 gallons i'll fill it up and it feels the same to me. I mean, uh, then guys that run the hot shot secret, they're like, oh, it idles better and it runs better. And I'll, I'm curious so, to see if I tried it, if I would feel. I think I am. To I'm, I'm being for real right now. This is a, okay, I'm looking at this one. This TBN booster. This is a fortified oil stabilizer nano lubricant. Now, this is that TBN number. Remember, Sean, that they were talking about in your oil analysis. It says a yeah, TBN booster. Number. Yep. Booster additive is the only fortified engine oil stabilizer that increases TBN and viscosity by replenishing the detergents and dispersants that are naturally lost over time. They're giving you a bottle to pretty much revitalize the oil that you have in the crankcase. When these detergents and dispersants additives are replenished, your oil will be effectively neutralized, will be able to effectively neutralize the acidic conditions that corrode your engines, get all that varnish and build up in that, that orange funk brown. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, they're fighting the degradation of the oil from fuel contamination, from just being broken down please turn sure more more acidic versus oil more base oil overfill wow well i'm going to play devil's advocate for a second ford motor company does not want to hear that they don't want additives mm -mm. their warranty says no additives they say maintenance and no additives. So you want to run a 50,000 mile oil change where you just throw your warranty from ford away because you're running a 50,000 mile oil change so is if you're going to do your analysis, just like Hot Shot Secret recommends and follow Hot Shot Secret, is Hot, is hot Shot Secret going to come up or are they going to step up and uh, warranty that engine for you if you followed their stuff to a T? I want to I wanna know. You should right see, look at there. the screen. You should see all the fuel additives that they have. And furthermore, is that, a combination of their oil and their fuel recommendations to, in order to be covered. Like you have to do the fuel and the oil together because wow. if they're talking regions, if they're talking, Oh, it cuts regions. That's probably a combination of fuel and oil. That's probably not just oil. You can what's get the best way a 55 gallon drum of diesel extreme injector cleaner and C tame booster for 2,600 bucks. Let's get it. 
<laughs> they got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of great stuff on here. Um, even for fuel, um, they got a lot of what's this lubricity? They got some some everyday diesel. They got some uh, winter anti gel, and they got this um, lubricity extreme. Well, you know what's funny is you bring this up. I was just watching this on Project Farms, and they were testing a uh, hot shot secret uh, lubricity enhancer or something. Wow. They were using like mobile one, 10 W 30 or five W 30 or something. And they were adding this stuff and testing it against the mobile one oil. And he was doing the wear test. And when he added this stuff, it increased or decreased the wear by about 10%. But he also tested their, uh, anti-wear by itself without putting in oil and it like didn't wear at all damn to i gotta oil. get these guys on the show man i want to check their shit out this is some really good uh some really good stuff i'm really liking this well i'm gonna try the fuel additive and see if like do, do you notice anything when you put it in like does it really do anything does it feel like it does anything to me no no i'm saying well hot shot oh, well hot I shot feel like anything i think if anything you you would notice that with a six liter more so just because of like stiction and shit right but i'm not to say that if we had a fuel additive going in our high pressure fuel system we would be not noticing anything Right. This one says this one's an everyday everyday diesel treatment six in one fuel booster. Here's something I want to bring up. One of the huge complaints that I have with the Ford additive is dealing dealing with that can is so annoying and it's so messy. The what? The what? The little the little Ford. Let me grab one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, yeah. is not cool, Ford. What are you doing? Damn, I I like you know what I like their I like their website. I like how everything is laid out. I like their headings. Everything's easy to read. I really like what they got going on here. And Hot Shots, if you guys are out there listening, um, you might want to get on this podcast and not only talk about your product, but maybe. Speak sponsor this podcast because not only uh do we have some diesel dudes on here on a regular the following that we have on the youtube channel and on the uh, instagram uh across all social medias uh we are nothing about uh, we are all about uh oil and maintaining our fuel and getting on that regiment to help foresee the life of of these trucks predominantly our trucks the power stroke this is going to be for you know any vehicle but predominantly just for us because we're power stroke lovers um what do we got to do this is uh, what if they what if they contact you and say hey we'll do it but you got to do a fifty thousand mile oil change and sample Ooh. Ooh. I'd be like my boy Sean. Uh, he's, he's all, all he's all about. He's it. gonna he's gonna plow too. He's yeah, he's gonna to plow with that boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that would be cool. I'm gonna uh, you know monitor the email. Um, I got a couple people we're waiting to hear maybe, back from. Maybe um, if uh, you go over to do they have a YouTube? Maybe if if you guys go over to their YouTube channel and leave a comment and say, uh, "Power Stroke Tech Talk." You got to check out Power Stroke. Maybe if I like left, 10, 10 or fifteen people did that. I left a comment on uh, their uh, Facebook and they gave me a heart and uh-huh. liked my maybe like comment. maybe like 15 people would go on Facebook and say, hey, uh, we want to see DS on Power Stroke or or uh, a rod on Power Stroke Tech Talk for get sure. Get some oil and do uh, maybe do an analysis test. Everybody, everybody, go to Hot Shots uh, Facebook or Instagram and uh, tell them to get with PTT and DS and get up here on the podcast and let's uh, let's see what they got. Let's see what Hot Shot secrets are. I What's would really secret? be curious to, to see 
if you could really get a 3% MPG. Now, uh, 3% is not bad. I wonder if it's like, you can get 3%, but you got to do fuel, you got to do oil, and you'll maybe see 3%. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's the case. We need to talk with one of their dudes. We need to talk with one of their dudes. I got, uh, I'm waiting to hear back from uh, SPE, Amy. I'm waiting to hear back from uh, Pusher Intakes. Um, also waiting to hear back from s and um, There's a bunch of people I've reached out to. Um, I just, I like the, some of the components that we have out there aftermarket. Um, I just want to find out a little bit more about them. Um, what are you guys running out there? Do you guys run an aftermarket colder intakes? Do you guys um, have different piping on them? I'm really curious to know. Uh, DS um, and myself uh, are running stock trucks, but we want to see what's out there. I've been talking about maybe getting a different air filter uh, set up. I think um, the 21s would be the 21s would be cool uh with with that on there um but uh i think that we're gonna end it here don't forget to check us out on spotify apple and amazon Podbeam, all those uh, other avenues uh, tell us what you liked what you didn't like um if you want to get on here make sure to check my email above my head and we'll get you in line uh ds is just now turned into spider-man and is about to climb his garage door uh, uh, we're having fun here on the podcast, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for watching in, um, and for tuning in and watching or listening. Um, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much.